Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of WDD's Hotspot. According to a 2012 study conducted by the U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, an average of 38 deaths of small children occur in the United States each year from heat stroke after being left unattended in a hot parked car. As a mom, this news is extremely upsetting, but I am relieved to hear that to help keep this from happening, three engineering undergrads from Baltimore's Johns Hopkins University have converted a Microsoft Connect into a child in the hot car detector. The team adapted the Connect for its ability to detect even the smallest of movements, such as those made by a sleeping baby. And because the infrared light that it uses is blocked by window glass, it won't be falsely triggered by movements occurring outside of the vehicle. On Friday, May 17th, the U.S. Navy's X-47B unmanned combat air system demonstrator conducted its first touch-and-go landing. The X-47B was one of two built by Northrop Grumman to demonstrate autonomous carrier operations, including launch, recovery, and operations within 50 nautical miles of a carrier. The intention is that the technology developed for the X-47B will one day lead to autonomous unmanned carrier-based aircraft for surveillance, recon, and combat duty. The Emotion is back with a brand new teaser video that showcases the device's interaction with Windows. The clip shows hand gestures replacing mouse pointer or multi-touch in a variety of Windows apps, making Leap and Windows 8 a perfect match. Leap Motion will work out of the box with most Windows and Mac OS X apps, but the fun starts when developers optimize their work for Leap. The company knows this and is helping to encourage development with its own app store, Airspace. So the wearable tech revolution seems to keep getting delayed, first with Google Glass and now with the Apple smartwatch which might end up being another 2014 release, late 2014 at that. Ming-Chi Kao of KGI Securities warns us not to get our hopes up for a 2013 iWatch, saying software and hardware challenges could force Apple to push its ship date back until late 2014. Apple may not have adequate resources to develop an iWatch version of iOS because it may require big changes to iPhone and iPad iOS this year. In addition, wearable device components aren't mature. For these reasons, we think mass production of the iWatch is more likely to begin in 2014, not 2013 as the market speculates. Cal goes on to predict that biometrics will play a big part in the risk-based computer. He thinks the technology will add both security and advanced health tracking features to the device. So stay tuned, no matter when this wearable tech revolution arrives, if ever, we're sure to keep hearing all about it. Well, that's all for this week. For more wireless news, go to wirelessdesignmag.com and be sure to join in on the conversation on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Megan Zimba, and I'll see you next time in the hotspot.